Welcome to this Killick Explains video and this week I want to do some more jargon busting and the piece of jargon I want to bust as it were is the Bitcoin ETF or exchange traded fund launched fairly recently seemingly signed off by regulators so what is it why is it popular and what are some of the dangers to watch out for so first of all what is it well cryptocurrencies themselves I've covered in other videos uh, and my view of them is a little dimmer than some people's. Uh, I've made a video called Why I Don't Invest in Cryptocurrency, for example. But these are electronic currency substitutes, if you like. Anonymous, not controlled by central banks, which fans say is one of their key benefits. And increasingly liquid in the sense that you can exchange one cryptocurrency for another. You can move into what are called stable coins and or you can cash them in for actual currency and spend them on an increasing but still relatively small list of goods and services. Now, for a lot of people, the underlying currencies themselves sound a little bit scary and quite tough to access and manage. So an exchange traded fund is superficially attractive. Exchange traded funds are well known by many investors. These are listed shares that track pure and simply via an algorithm, an underlying something. And that underlying something could be an index, a commodity, a basket of shares, or in this case, one cryptocurrency, or potentially a basket of cryptocurrencies in the future. There are, these products are bound to proliferate. There are only a few around at the moment, but more are surely in the pipeline. Now, Let's say you're somebody thinking, well, I wouldn't buy cryptocurrencies. I don't fully understand them and how to get involved in them. Uh, and I've read the press, but I, but I might buy one of these exchange traded funds because regulators seem more comfortable with them. Well, what is it about them that makes regulators more comfortable? Well, it's simply this. The underlying product isn't actually the cryptocurrencies themselves. It's something called cryptocurrency futures, which I'll come back to. And regulators see those traded on exchanges they recognize, like the CBOE and the CME and so on. And they've taken the view that, well, that's a regulated market, we understand. So we're comfortable having another regulated product or regulated market product, an ETF, based on those released into the markets as a whole. But it's something of a didactic distinction, in my opinion, for reasons I'll come back to in just a moment. Now, are these things popular? Yes, they are. It does seem that Bitcoin ETFs are attracting uh, large inflows. It does seem that people who wouldn't go for the underlying cryptocurrencies are potentially going for this thing. And yet, you may struggle to buy these things through a uh, conventional brokerage um, fund manager and so on. And why is that? Well, the reason is there are still some big concerns that attach to the underlying assets themselves that, and also attach to these exchange traded funds. Number one is the volatility has gone nowhere. Simply creating a, a cryptocurrency backed ETF does very little to limit volatility and downside risk. Number two, these things are expensive. All right, now charges range, depending on which one you look at, from somewhere just under 1% per year to up to 2.5% per year. So there's a fairly serious drag on the potential performance you could enjoy from these things. Thirdly, there is a technical problem with them, if you like, around the way they've been built. And that is what's called futures roll cost. Now, to understand this, um, the diagram that's about to pop up may help, but essentially futures are contracts which allow people to speculate or hedge an exposure to an underlying asset rising or falling. And Bitcoin futures are exactly that, and they're traded on recognized regulated exchanges. The technical problem is this. When the market's in contango, which it normally is, essentially, unlike holding the underlying asset, you've got to basically keep replacing your exposure in order to maintain it. You have to keep selling the near month, as it's called, using the jargon, and buying longer dated months. In other words, and this, the chart, as I say, may help, you are constantly selling low to buy high to maintain the position. And what that creates is a drag in terms of the way that the ETF will track the performance of the underlying cryptocurrency. You simply won't get 
a mirroring effect and quite a few people won't be aware of that. So you've got the volatility hasn't gone away. You've got the fact these things are quite expensive at the moment. Costs may come down as more are listed. And you've got this sort of tracking error, if you like, this, this built-in inherent problem with mirroring the performance of the underlying asset. And that's true, by the way, for any exchange-traded fund that tracks a futures contract rather than whatever the underlying asset is, whether that underlying is a commodity or in this case, a cryptocurrency. So be careful. Yes, a lot of people will jump on this particular bandwagon. Quite a few people, it seems, have taken the argument that well, I don't have to buy the underlying cryptocurrency because now I can buy a regulated futures contract instead. But none of the volatility has gone away. Costs can be a problem. And watch out for that tracking error effect I mentioned earlier. So is a Bitcoin ETF a product that I would comfortably swap in? Given my discomfort personally with cryptocurrencies, I have to say for me, the answer is no. But ultimately the decision, as they say, is yours. Now to find out more about some of these topics, uh, cryptocurrencies included, please do go to our extensive video library, killick.com forward slash learn. And if you'd like a copy of any of my guides, one of them does cover exchange traded funds in a bit more detail. That's the how to invest in equities guide. Do please drop us an email, editor at killick.com.